Thank you for joining us, America. We're so glad you are here. Shelly is with us in Omaha, Nebraska. Hi, Shelly. How are you? I'm doing really well, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. Welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. How can I help? I wanted to pick your brain. Um, We are closing in on the point where we're going to be working on step four, investing. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. we have a bit of a struggle in that area because... My husband lost quite a large amount of money in the stock market in 2007, so he's very uh, uncomfortable when it comes to the thought of ever using another dime of his money in that type of area. I had Um, millions of dollars (laughs) in the market in 2007, and I didn't lose any money. And I, he lost a lot. You know why? (laughs) You know why he lost a lot? I don't. Because I, I do because he sold at the, at the bottom. Yeah. He bought high and panicked and sold low. He thought the whole world was coming to an end. He got out at exactly the wrong time. Probably the case. So what is quite a lot of money? Um, I mean, several hundred thousand to us. That's a lot. It was an inher- It was an inheritance, and so. So he had now- money invested in mutual funds. I'm not sure of all the details since we weren't together at that time. Um, I just know that any time we talk about investing, he gets this <laughs> horrified look on his face and <laughs> he's like, I can't do that again. Okay. <laughs> so right. I'm trying to figure out a way to either to have good talking points to steer us back down that direction or, you know, what it, what is, if it's just not going to happen. And, okay, you know, uh, let, me, of, let me give you an example. Okay, so here's some talking points. Let's talk this okay. for a minute. Basically, um, the only way he lost $200,000 in the market is if he started with 400000 at the top of the market and he sold it at the bottom of the market. Okay? Mm-hmm. That's the only way that's possible, mathematically. Unless he invested in a company... Uh, in single stock that went completely broke. but And then you might lose it, quote, all. But if it were invested in mutual funds, the stock market went from a 14,000 Dow to a, uh, a 6,900 Dow, okay? Uh-huh. Which means it went in half. Yeah. And today, today it's in the 16,000 range. And so any money, if you had stayed in, if you were in a growth stock mutual fund or a series of growth stock mutual funds, your 400000 would have gone down to 200000 and now it would be five or 600000 Yeah. You follow me? I do. Because you just, you just, ju- if you, you, don't, you don't get hurt on a roller coaster unless you jump off. So that's talking <laughs> point number one is we need to, he needs to, you need to actually find out what really happened because here's what happens when money goes down like that and somebody bails. They, uh, it becomes a fishing story in reverse because you're, what happens to all of us when we lose money on something is we're very emotional about it and, it, and we exaggerate it in our mind. I had a business yeah. thing I tried inside the business here a few years ago, and we lost $378,000 on this thing. And anytime someone says that, in my mind, it feels like I lost millions of dollars. <laughs> and I didn't. I lost 300 which was plenty, Okay. But it feels like I lost ten million, and I only lost three hundred, because that's what your emotions do naturally, right? Yeah, and it's you know there's some pride in that and some guilt. About yeah, yeah, that. And, and 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 a feeling of I don't know how to drive this car, so I really don't want to drive cars. Yep. Because the one time I drove a car, I wrecked it, and I about killed myself, and yeah. so it's like a lack of confidence thing. Okay. Yep. So the only cure for this is knowledge. And, and it takes a little time to heal and get the knowledge. And that is you sit down with someone that is in the business that has the heart of a teacher and is not trying to twist your arm and sell you something. They're just trying to teach you. And him is who I'm talking to, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, let's, change the, let's change what we're investing in for discussion purposes so you can kind of see what I'm doing. And he can see what I'm doing. He can watch this or listen to it later, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, because let, let's pretend you bought a house and the market dove and you lost your job and you got foreclosed on. It'd be the same kind of feeling about a house. 
but yeah. but you wouldn't be quite as hesitant. You might you, you wouldn't say most people wouldn't say, "Well, I'm never ever buying a house again." I got burnt that one time, and I'm never ever buying a house again. Mine might. He'd probably determine that instead he was going to go out and hold his own lumber and build his own. Yeah. House. Well, I mean, <laughs> there there would be that guy. Okay, he may be that he's, guy. He's that guy. But but he most is. people. <laughs> Most people, it's easier for them to recover in that category because most of us have more walking around knowledge of real estate than we do walking around knowledge. We naturally know real estate's track record because we remember my mom and dad. I remember they bought a house for $13,200 in 1963 in Nashville when I was three years old. And they later sold it for a hundred thousand bucks. I know that story, okay? And we all have, we all know that real estate goes up in general if you hold on to it, and in general, it's a good investment. And even though I got my face kicked in on one deal, does that mean I'm going to avoid real estate? Not as, not as much because I kind of know it's okay, just from walking around. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The mutual funds in the stock market doesn't have that. It's got this mysterious fog around it, and we don't have this walking around knowledge of it. And the only way we can get that kind of track record, real estate's got a great track record. That's why we'd have comfort jumping back into it. And we don't have that natural knowledge of the track record of the stock market unless you've studied it a long time and know a little bit about it. So the only way I know how to solve this is knowledge will remove the fear. There's two kinds of fear. There's fear that's logical. Don't play. Don't touch a hot stove. Don't play in the middle of the interstate. You'll get run over. Those are logical fears. And then there's false evidence appearing real. If you got burned and lost some money on a bad investment in real estate or in the stock market, it doesn't disqualify either one of those asset classes as being a good place to invest. It just means you've got some learning to do in either one of those places to be comfortable with it again. And so whether you were foreclosed on or whether you lost money in the stock market in 2008, um, whichever the category, you just got to go back and relearn and look at that. Uh, and again, a lot of people lost money when that market turned down because they panicked yeah. and they jumped out of the roller coaster. And, and so you've just got to go back and go, that's okay. Everybody makes mistakes, but let's look at what the history of the stock market is over the last 70 years. And let's look at when it goes down, how often it goes down, how often it comes back. And and how comfortable are we going to be putting our Roth IRA, our kids' college fund in something like that? I'm very comfortable putting money in something like that. It is more volatile than real estate. Most real estate isn't as crazy. Now, some real estate is, but buying a house or buying a rental house or buying a, a simple office building or a little strip center in a city um, you know, a piece of piece of land or right around a city somewhere. It's fairly predictable. It's less doesn't jump up and down as much as the stock market jumps up and down. Um, and so I like real estate for that reason is I like the predictability of it. I like the fact I can go out there and touch it and, and I can put my hands on it, that bricks and mortar thing. Um, so I, I more of my money is in real estate than it is in the stock market, but I still have substantial investments in good growth stock mutual funds and i still believe in the american economy and i still believe in our future and i still think i'm going to make really good money on my money because i i still think there's great in, inventions and great things that americans are going to come up with and start companies doing and i'll be invested in them through the vehicle of mutual funds and i'll be making you know whatever the market makes in the past it's made 10 to 12 percent on average and i'll be making that instead of huddling in a bank at 0.75 in a stupid savings account. So I would recommend all of that to say learning. And if you don't have somebody to sit with, go to DaveRamsey.com, click on ELP for endorsed local provider. Sit down with one of those guys. Tell them you're not buying anything. Tell them you're scared. Say, teach me about the market. Show me what I did wrong. Show me how I can understand this. And then they'll show you and you teach, you learn and only invest when you're comfortable then. No pressure. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button to get the latest content and check out these other great clips from the show. And so you have to break the cycle. You have to flip this thing on its head and make it behave. You've got to get so fired up and wired up that your broke friends think you've lost your mind.